Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Yes! Welcome, you sexy animals, to another episode of Cut the Tape, filmed right here in my very own world-famous Frame and Picture Shop. That's right, visit us at frameandpictureshop.com. I'm bringing these bad boys to TFCon. Maybe one of you lucky viewers will get to go home with them. So, it is another episode of Cut the Tape. I had a whole thing planned out. I, I, I had tracks and Galvatron lined up. But something happened. I got mail. So let's open the mail. I got a couple things. Each box will get bigger. So we're gonna start with the small box. You guys know what this box is. It's a simple Hasbro Post Pulse box. Oh, this is special. This, this is for Cut the Tape, another episode of Cut the Tape. I got another Transformers Back to the Future Gigawatt. Or is it Gigawatt? I think it's Gigawatt. Figure. So, now I have a whole bunch of the crossover figures. That might be next week's episode. Um, I got Ectotron and, and What's-His-Face and Plane Guy and um, the other one. So, yeah, I haven't opened any of these up. Yeah, this will be great. I really, really love the packaging on this. It's, it's very G1-esque. I mean, and the size is great. The size of the, of the car is like, it's perfect. You put them right next to your G1 cars and it's great. The artwork is a classic pose of Marty on in the poster from the first film. You know, if they ever re-release this guy, they got to give him the Mr. Fusion and a hoverboard. I mean, the hoverboard should have been his weapon anyway. It folds out to like a, a sword or something. I don't know. Whatever. Next box comes to us from overseas. That means it's just, it's not just international, it's from an ocean away. What ocean? I don't know. It's one, one of the six. I think I know what this is. It's something very fancy. Yeah, something very fancy. Very, very fancy. Very fancy. This is my Star Wars decanter. Um, 750 milliliters, which means it's good for, you know, one night of entertaining, if that. But, uh, you know, I needed something a little grown up. You know, I'm getting older. I'm getting older. The gray in my beard is not just for show. It's there naturally. Oh, beautiful. There's some, um, uh, they're not sugar packets. <laughs> uh, don't tell your kids they're sugar packets. Silicone gel packs. They're not for eating. Anyway, the story behind this. Prop maker Andrew Ainsworth the, of Shepperton Design Studios created the original Stormtrooper helmets. And for many years, I think he was selling them props or actual helmets made from the mold. 
And these products are based on the original molds Andrew produced, uh, except no compromises. That's a good line. You know, in framing sometimes, first time customers get a little sticker shocked. And I'm just gonna tell them, accept no compromise. After all, you're the one who's gonna take whatever I frame for you home and you have to look at it for the rest of your life. By the way, you should really get your comic books framed. All right. I got a box from Big Bad Toy Store. I'm gonna put it back down here. All right. Excellent. Shattered glass drift. I like the colors. I like the burgundy. I think I would have been a little happier with this now that I think about it. If it had stripes from the official convention one. Was it a convention? No, it was the um, the subscription figure. That's what it was. Drift, Shattered Glass Drift. So Shattered Glass Drift had an Arashikagi symbol on it that was like cut down the middle. Instead of being like this, it was like this. It's like somebody had taken it and just run a line through it and bent it a little bit. And that Arashikagi symbol I, I remember I emailed Lanny Latham, who was working on the deco, and I sent him the file and I said, hey, can you put this on Drift's sword? And he's like, why? It looks like the Arashikagi symbol. I'm like, yeah, yeah, just put it on his sword. And he's like, why? Just trust me, do it, please. It's a thing, do it. So it's on there, right? That bent, I don't want to call it bent, but that um, slanted Arashikagi symbol was originally gonna be on the Micronaut um, space glider. And the story that we had been working on at Hasbro was that the space glider was one of these guy, there was multiple space gliders and they were sent out by Baron Carter to explore different universes and galaxies. And the space glider that came to earth crash landed in Japan. And where he crashed ended up becoming the place where the Arashikagi had their dojo. And so we were trying to come up with a name like the Dweller in the Mountain or the Armor of, of the One or the, the um, Space Master's Armor. Because, you know, in the Arashikagi, they have the Hard Master, Silent Master. So we were trying to come up with a name. I don't think we ever got there. But the Arashikagi symbol in the lore, our idea was, all right, well, maybe it comes from the space glider. So we were tying that back to a film, a film concept that Andy and I were working on. It was Transformers vs. G.I. Joe, but it took place on Cybertron. And we animated the first little bit of it, um, very, very crude in-house animation done by an intern. Um, don't think animation traditional style very very just, you know pictures drawings doing that that's all it was anyway at the end of the script we had the joes getting on their ship to go back to earth and it's raining and snake eyes stops and scarlet and duke are like snake eyes come on we're leaving and he points and off in the distance you see a building but the lights on the building are illuminated as the Arashikagi symbol. So at some point, a Micronaut space glider made it to Cybertron. 
Um, and then later on we were joking, well, what if Storm Shadow gets the Ancient Masters or the Space Masters armor and he puts it on and he becomes the new Space Glider and he is now Herald of Baron Karza. I haven't thought about that in years. Man. Oh, hey. Michelangelo. It's pizza time. I didn't even realize this was uh, this was in there. Ah, uh, you know I'm gonna open these anyway, so I'm not. Yeah, there's one thing I love about turtles. And that's the original four turtles in their toy colors. I am a sucker for the four turtles in their original colors. The dark, dark forest green Leonardo, the brown Donatello, the bright neon green Raphael, and the muted green Michelangelo. Something about those four turtle designs and, and like, the design on the mouths, like I'm a sucker for that stuff. I, I don't know why. See, well, you know why? Because I saw the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies. I was living in South America at the time. My mom took me to see it. I wasn't sure what it was about when we went. I knew it was something to do with like fighting turtles. And I, I really hadn't seen a commercial or anything for it. And we went in and we saw the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action film. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And what was torture for me was when we moved to America, I got a VHS tape. I got a few VHS tapes of the cartoon, but we didn't have a VCR yet. So I had the tapes, but I couldn't watch them because we didn't have a VCR yet. I think I had to wait a few months. And cool, Grimlock. These are the uh, vinyl premium collectible statues. Uh, you've seen these before at GameStop. The Optimus Prime recently showed up at Target and it has a variation on it. So the Optimus Prime that was available through places like Big Bad Toy Store, GameStop, is different from the one at Target. The figure is the same, the boxes are the same, but the color on the boxes and the color on the figure are different. The one that comes out from Target is a little brighter. Not a little, it's, it's a lot brighter because I bought a second set to open and I'm like, oh, cool, now it's at Target. Let me just pick it up. It was an impulse buy, brought it home was gonna compare which one was the nicer box so I can keep that one sealed. And then I realized the boxes and the figures are different. Crazy, crazy. Now I said each box gets a little bigger. This box is very big. Ugh. I'm just gonna leave it there. This box is very big. Whew. All right. Oh, lots of fun stuff. Man, they, uh, they packed this thing tight. So I got a set of these. These are the six to collect, collect them all. Optimus Prime minifigure. Very generic. Has Trypticon and Metroplex fighting on the background. You get Starscream, Bumblebee, Grimlock, Optimus, Soundwave, and Megatron. Um, paint job leaves something to be desired. Some have more paint than others. Uh, looks like Soundwave and Starscream got the short end of the stick. It's funny to me that 
we keep going back to G1 over and over and over again. And I wonder how many kids know about this Grimlock as a T-Rex. Yeah, the, the cartoons are out there. You can, you know, movie just came out in 4K, Blu-ray. But how many kids really know Grimlock as, like, who is this, like, who is this product for? Is it for a kid? Like, if a kid gets this, oh, it says Transformers on it. All right, the robots. I know these robots, Starscream and Megatron, Bumblebee and Optimus. Um, maybe they don't know Soundwave, maybe they do. But this one's a dinosaur. It's not a robot, it's a, it's a dinosaur. Now, dinosaurs are cool, and kids love dinosaurs, and it's a robot dinosaur. You know, Dinobots are cool. But how many people know this is Grimlock? Like, ah, uh, Skeletor's uh, Havoc Staff. I actually got this for work. I'm making a really cool shadow box with an original painting from artist Ken Christensen. It's going to have the... Um, uh, scaled prop replica of the Havoc Staff at the top and then the sword at the bottom. And then the Skeletor is going to have a... Uh, oh, there it is. Gorgeous. And then on the, the top of the frame, it's going to have 3D printed the gates of Snake Mountain. So you'll be able to see through the gates of Snake Mountain to see that there's a figure behind it. And then you open the gates up. Doing some crazy stuff here. The frame and picture shop. That's why we're world famous now. I, I got something else, but I don't want to show you what it is. That's, that's a cool looking figure. All right. I got my DK-19 and my DK-21s. I still haven't even put together my... Devastator from the movie. You think I'm going to get to this anytime soon? Get out of here. Get out of here with that. That ain't happening. Mm -mm -mm. No way. Speaking of the way, I love Master Universe. I just got this. Big Bad Toy Store. Had it. I'd rather give them my money than give Amazon my money. We got Scream of Star. Another awesome vinyl statue. And then we got Bee and Bumble. I really like how they're, it's not one size fits all. It's not like, hey, these are gonna be 12 inches. No, it's, hey, this guy's bigger than this guy. This guy's smaller. I dig it. Thank you. Thank you. Detail is important. Now, if you know me, you know that I like model kits. We were just talking about the Drift model kit, right? I cannot wait to open one of these. Ooh. Ooh, I've been waiting for these for a long time. These are metal model kits. Yes, this is G1 Soundwave. A bunch of these showed up. I've been going crazy with them. I'm eventually going to get them all. But just to show you how crazy I've been going. Soundwave. Megatron. Of course I had to get the Jet Megatron from the IDW series. You know, I really pushed for that to get into the Generations line. We ended up making a little deluxe figure. My original concept was that he would have extra armor to make the jet even bigger and that extra armor would combine with the Megatron figure to turn this into Decepticod and the other figure in the assortment the leader class was going to be Ultra Magnus you know the cab unites with the armor but no I was too ahead of my time we got Yaz oh, I cannot wait to play with these cannot wait and because I got Soundwave, I had to get Rumble. He is called Rumble in the package. And Laserbeak and Ravage. Yeah. 
I had a, you know, I couldn't leave Jazz by himself, so I had to get this awesome IDW inspired Star Saber. Ooh, it's so heavy. I love it. I love it. I had to get an extra one of these. Now, my friend Kyle sent me one of these. And this is a thousand piece premium puzzle. Um, it's very similar to the poster that's right behind me. What I want to do with this, I want to frame this puzzle. Like I want to build the puzzle, a thousand piece puzzle, 20 by 28, and then frame it. Going crazy at the frame picture shop. All right, we got a couple other th little fun things. Uh, I love the uh, Haya Toys alien figures. Um, <laughs> I got a whole bunch of the um, <laughs> of the ones being shot up. Uh, I'm gonna build a big, huge diorama eventually. Uh, it's gonna be a cobra base. And each room, it's going to be like a lab. And then one room, they're going to have dinosaurs and the dinosaurs are breaking out. Another one, they got aliens. Another one, it's going to be zombies. Another one will just be like some guy named Kevin. <laughs> Conan. April O'Neil. Rocksteady. Metalhead. Oh, oh crap. There's another gigawatt in here. I guess I have a whole bunch now. Yeah, I'm missing the one, the 1985 one. I need that one. Frenzy. And transmutate. Yeah, this is Ramjet from G2. Love G2! Yay for G2! Oh, yes! All right, we'll open it. I know it's what you guys want to see. All right. Can't even see me in this. The Ark. Did you ever think we'd get an Ark? Did you ever think? I mean, mainframe is what I thought we'd get a mainframe before we got an Ark. And to think. Mainframe transforms into Teletran 1, and he transforms into like kind of like the med thing, hover thing from Beast Wars. That's what I like to think of it as. Now we need a nemesis. Back of the box. All right, we got some blast effects. Always important with Hasbro stuff to check. Make sure there's no pieces taped to the inside. We've got a black arachnia card, and I think it's dark arachnia on the... No, it's black arachnia and black arachnia. That's all right. We've got instructions, and we've got, um, I assume it's Optimus? Yeah, a little. That, now that is the world's smallest Optimus. I'm not even gonna take that out of the bag. All right. Oh, look, it just, it just comes right out, doesn't it? 
that it just comes right out of the box. There it is. We got a few pieces in here, some of the side pieces. Not difficult to tell where these go. It's the right color. It's the right shape. It's surprisingly big for today's modern era. But I'm gonna make a very bold statement. The age of the 1980s, and this is me showing my age again. The age of the 1980s was the age of the playset. You had Metroplex, you had Trypticon for Transformers. You had Omega Supreme before that. You had that big Warren cardboard base. Let's switch it up. GoBots, you had the command center, you had Thruster. You had a big cardboard base, just like the Warren one for the Super GoBots. Let's back it up. Star Wars, you had the Death Star. You had the Ewok Village. You had Yoda's Hut. In the 70s, you had Mego play sets for everything. Star Trek, you had Wayne Manor, Joker stuff, Batcave. I am very happy to get this toy. It's great. It's gonna be super poseable, it's gonna be super fun. I'm gonna sit there and go I'm gonna annoy the hell out of my wife with this thing. Right? And hey, speaking of playsets, you had the Millennium Falcon, which was a ship and a playset. You had the ATAT. GI Joe, don't even get me started on GI Joes. Terradrome, the flag, GI Joe headquarters, the Defiant. Definitely missing a tower up here. Hello, tower. Hello. It's somewhere. The point is, this this could have came out in the eighties. This should have came out in the 80s. Hell, this should have came out with MicroMasters. I am so happy to have this. I think this is great. I'm gonna love the hell out of this. Better late than never? Okay. But it could have been done earlier. I know that sounds like a complaint. It's an observation. All right. We've gone long, let's cut the tape. I made a big, huge mess. I gotta find a little tower that goes up here. It's somewhere. It better be somewhere. Remember to wash your hands, wear a mask. Please get vaccinated for the good of the many because the good of the many outweigh the good of the few or the one. Get vaccinated. I'll see you at TFCon. I'll have a booth there. I'm doing a panel. I'll have uh, some books for sale. I'll have a ton of art for sale. 
come see me, visit us at the Freeman Picture Shop on Twitter, Facebook, and online. I am happy to do whatever framing you need and mail it out to you or visit us in the store. All right, thank you so much. And remember, there's always time to cut the tape.